an ambitious new entry in the Pokemon series, supposedly taking place entirely in one city. But is this really Lumios of the past, or perhaps the future? There's no doubt Zygarde will somehow be involved, but could the A in this game's peculiar title be hinting at another legendary? And exactly what's going on with this redevelopment company that seems to have been hiding in plain sight all along? This short trailer was clearly meant to give us more questions than answers, but today I want to dive deeper into this mysterious new game and see if we can uncover some of the secrets of Pokemon Legends ZA. So let's first try and establish what it means to be a Legends game. Is it the gameplay, being more action oriented with players sneaking around and catching Pokemon without the need to battle? Is it the setting, taking place in a previously established region but in a different time period? Or maybe it's the story, with ancestors of familiar characters shedding light on the lore of the Pokemon world and how certain things came to be. Some might argue that Legends games don't necessarily have to take place in the past, and while I agree it would be sick to get a Pokemon game set in the future, I can't just ignore the definition of the word legend, typically being used to describe stories that took place in history, as in the past. Adding on the fact that this new entry is being labeled as an action RPG, just like the first Legends game, gives me enough of a baseline to assume that these are the defining traits of a Pokemon Legends game, and will likely appear in ZA and other possible future Legends titles. So with that established, let's explore further into this setting of Lumio City in the past. In my trailer breakdown, I said that this architectural aesthetic and the whole concept of redeveloping Lumios made me think of the Belle Epoque, the time period in which the Eiffel Tower was built in real life. However, many people in the comments and all over the internet have pointed out that this redevelopment of Lumios is actually more closely inspired by Haussmann's renovation of Paris, which took place between 1853 and 1870. Now of course history in the Pokemon universe doesn't exactly match one to one with our real world, however this time period would almost perfectly match with the colonization of Hokkaido in Japan, which if you don't know is the prefecture Pokemon Sinnoh region is based on, the region previously known as Hisui. So it appears this new Legends game will take place roughly around the same time period as Legends Arceus, which means certain familiar faces could reappear in Lumios. In case you didn't know, Commander Kamado, the boss of the Galaxy Expedition team and ancestor of Professor Rowan, along with his partner in crime Benny, the ancestor of Wally, actually immigrated to Hisui from another unspecified region. So if both Legends games really do take place around the same time, it's certainly possible they could have migrated from Kalos. We even see Kamado don a very medieval European style armor, which always seemed a bit out of place to me in this Japanese inspired region so makes me think the commander must have come from somewhere in the west. Now that we have a better idea of when this game takes place, perhaps the bigger question fans have is why just Lumios? Granted, this bit of information comes from a Nintendo tweet and many have speculated it could be a mistranslation, but I feel like if that was the case, they probably would have deleted it by now. So assuming Legend ZA really does take place all within this one city, how exactly could wild Pokemon work in this new Lumios? In the original Legends Arceus, we learned that Pokemon can be quite dangerous creatures, but as the game progresses, more and more villagers warm up to the idea of coexisting and even domesticating them to help with tasks. So it could be that when we first start our adventure, the streets of Lumios are overrun with wild Pokemon, and our goal is to help the townspeople take back control by catching and domesticating them. But when I look at this map of old Lumios, the thing my eyes keep coming back to are those five domes. What exactly could they be? In my trailer breakdown, I posited the idea that they could be a primitive version of Pokemon gyms. And while I still think it'd be really cool to see the origins of the whole Pokemon League system, I've seen a lot of people speculate that these could instead be the arenas in which we fight this game's equivalent of noble Pokemon. In case you forgot, those were the big golden boys that you had to calm down with the bombs. And if the gameplay for this new entry follows the original Legends Arceus, then it would make a lot of sense for these five sections of the city to each have a noble Pokemon that rules over it. But what if instead of golden glowing titans, we have to calm down raging mega evolutions? Let's be real, there's definitely going to be new mega evolutions, what better way to introduce them than making them part of the main story? 
I know there's a big discussion around whether regional forms are actually better than megas, at least in terms of design, but to that I say, why not both? You could have mega evolutions take the place of boss battles, and regional forms return as ride Pokemon to help us traverse the map. Or better yet, just mega evolutions for these new regional forms. You literally get the best of both worlds. Going back to these five domes though, they could also be a way to bring more Pokemon into the city. Like what if after defeating each boss, their arena becomes a gathering spot for wild Pokemon? Kinda like the Terrarium from the latest DLC, except just one biome in each. That could explain where wild Pokemon go after we've tamed their section of the city. So in the end, I think wild Pokemon spawning in Lumios just makes the most sense, and even become a welcome change of scenery to the usual open field aesthetic that's in pretty much every other Pokemon game. Next, I want to talk about a peculiar little detail in the trailer that's been making quite some waves in the speculation communities, and it's this Talonflame we see swooping into the scene and flying around Prism Tower, while seemingly de-evolving all the way back down to a little Fletchling. Could this be hinting at a new form of reverse evolution? Probably not, but you know this is a theory video, so of course we gotta look deeper into this. Now it could be a simple reference to the intro of Pokemon X and Y where Fletchling flies into our room, but pretty much every recent Pokemon game has had some kind of time travel element, and I think that's exactly what this little bird's trying to tell us. The logo we see throughout the trailer, which I previously speculated is the logo for the construction company that's redeveloping Lumios, looks kind of like the spiral seen in the loading screen of Legends Arceus, which itself is meant to resemble the space-time rift we fell from in the sky above Mount Coronet. Now the fact they chose to make this their logo could mean the company is made up of time travelers that came to this past version of Lumios by choice. Maybe they figured out how to go back and forth in time whenever they want, and many people have theorized we might be able to visit two versions of past and future Lumios within this game. It certainly is a curious choice making this Firebird go backwards through its evolutions, but personally I don't think it means anything crazy mechanics wise, and more likely it's related to the time travel shenanigans that will surely ensue in this story. But speaking of this redevelopment company, one clever Redditor has found some evidence as to who exactly they might be. You see, in Paldea's Lavincia City, we can find these gleaming skyscrapers with a sign up front that's an exact match with the letters found in the intro of the Legend ZA trailer. Talking to a nearby NPC, you learn that these buildings are all owned by a company called the Paldea Realty Group. But being a real estate company doesn't necessarily mean that's what the sign itself says. In fact, according to the Legend ZA trailer, these letters translate to Urban Redevelopment Plan, which is quite strange considering the exact same symbols appear in various other parts of Paldea, and even in other regions, like this elevator back in Galar. So all over the western Pokemon regions, or I guess more specifically the European regions, Paldea, Kalos, and Galar, we find this exact same phrase. So what exactly could it mean? We know it's not the actual name of the company because I'm assuming that's what we see here below the logo in the trailer, so my guess is this is some kind of slogan that the companies become famous for, so they slap it on all their products. Or it could just be another classic example of Pokemon reusing assets, but like, come on, they could have easily picked some different symbols. Switching over to a different logo though, we've got the actual game. It's pretty clear the Z here represents the legendary Pokemon Zygarde, as not only does the texture match with Zygarde's cells design, but seeing as Zygarde would have been on the cover of Pokemon Z, may it rest in peace, it feels inevitable for this legendary to represent this game, with it sort of being Z's spiritual successor. But what I haven't seen many people talk about is the hyphen or dash part of the logo. There's nothing really noteworthy about it in the trailer, but for some odd reason, the logo on the official website appears to have a slight blue and red highlight around the hyphen. This could of course be a reference to Xerneas and Eveltal, the cover legendaries of Pokemon X and Y and other members of the Aura Trio. 
In Legends Arceus, we got primal forms of Dialga and Palkia, so it's very likely these two will get a similar treatment in Legends ZA, maybe even Mega Evolutions. But let's not forget about Zygarde's complete form, which also features some red and blue highlights as part of its design. Could it be that we'll have a collectathon quest similar to the Spirit Tomb Wisp scattered around Hisui, but this time we'll be collecting Zygarde cells? The reward would certainly be way better this time. But what if the Order Pokemon isn't the only mascot of this game? Many fans have pointed out that the letter A in this logo has its own sort of leafy texture, which has led to a few theories about what this could represent. I've often heard the Aura Trio or Colossian Legends as being inspired by Yggdrasil, the world tree from Norse mythology. Doing some research, I found that most interpretations of this world tree mention some kind of bird perched atop of it, while land creatures like deer live at the base of the tree, and a snake living in its roots, which does fit with this interpretation of the world tree. However, it's worth pointing out that Xerneas itself also turns into a tree and is known as the Life Pokemon, so I'm not too confident this potential new legendary would be based on that concept. After all, it wasn't so long ago we all got hyped about Terrapagos being the world turtle and look how that ended up. So for all we know, this A could just stand for Arceus. After all, he is called the original one, and if Zygarde represents the end, what better Pokemon to represent the beginning? I swear to god, if we get a Mega Arceus, bro. <laughs> Last but not least, I want to talk about something peculiar people seem to notice when looking back at the original Legends Arceus trailer. Our first look at the entire Legends series was a table with a storybook that opens to reveal Hisui but you can see two other books stacked underneath, with the bottom book being green. Could it be that Pokemon Z was there all along? This has made many people think that Pokemon Legends will be a trilogy of sorts, with Legends Arceus being the first, Legends ZA now being announced, and a third yet to be revealed game coming in the future. Now of course, if ZA is successful, making another Legends game seems like a no-brainer, but the idea of them all being linked as a trilogy is quite interesting to me. Like I mentioned, there has been quite a lot of time travel stuff in pretty much every recent Pokemon game, so finally connecting all the dots and getting answers to some of the big questions like what is going on with the Fallers would be pretty epic. The fact the final book is purple though makes me think of Pokemon Crystal, and I guess Legends Johto would be pretty cool, but I think we all know which region should get the Legends treatment most. 